So, I mean, you're legitimately the person who wrote the book on uh, preparing, prepping for success, uh, preparing for uh, success. So I got to ask you, what, what do you do? What, what is, what are some steps that you take that you have found beneficial for, for yourself in, in preparing yourself to, to, and I, I guess it would be time frame related. So if it changes from daily to a longer term successful outlook. Yeah. So I think um, so the book originally was meant for myself, like notes for myself, the things that I need to do to prepare for success. And eventually that was published. And the in integrity part is actually one of the foundational elements, right? Because it's all starts from that. And that is one of my top values as well is like integrity and morality. Um, so with that, like that affects everything. So I really pay attention to every single thing that I that comes out of my mouth. And I try to be conscious of it. Otherwise, I'm not going to say things like a lot of times people say things for saying it. So I, I try to pay really close attention to the words that I myself uh, say. And then next thing is when you notice that you had a break of integrity or a lack of integrity, or you said you're going to do something and you didn't, then one of the things is rather than apologizing for it or saying, oh, sorry, you know, I'll, I'll do it again. You know, I'll do it next time because that's not you're not you're not going to do it. So the thing is, what am I putting in place to ensure that doesn't happen again? And with traders, that's how you use it. If you break your trading plan, you said, I'm going to hold it to this target and then you get out early. Okay, don't say sorry. It's not going to do anything. You're going to do it again. Like what are, rules are you putting in place to ensure you don't do it again? Now that could be accountability. That could be automated uh, orders in your system. Uh, that could be, you know, some sort of something that pinch you like a consequence. You got to put some money down somewhere. Whatever it is, having those things in place uh, to ensure it doesn't happen. So uh, you're going back to the friend example. Like I, I noticed that recently with one of my friends, I said, yeah, we'll catch up. And you know, we never did. So the next time we spoke, I said, Hey, let's put it on a calendar right now. We're going to meet you know, next week at 5 PM. You know, it's in now, if anything changes, you let me know, but it's in now. So now it's done. There's no saying, sorry, or I'll, we'll catch up soon. We'll definitely figure out a time. Let's do it right now. So mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest things. You know, because the why we talk about the why being that anchor that keeps you accountable and keeps you sticking to your plan. But really the key here is, and I'm just seeing this right now is, is the integrity part. That's the thing that actually holds you accountable because really without somebody else telling you what you need to do, like a boss and saying that if you don't do it, you're going to get fired or you're going to, you know, get, demoted or whatever the consequence might be. Somebody else is doing that for you. But when, as traders, we have to be self-accountable and how do you actually do that? And it comes from that integrity part that you're talking about, because it really is doing what you say you're going to do. And I've never been able to articulate that before, understand exactly where that comes from. And th that's the key right there. So again, thank you. This has been great. I, <laughs> yeah. Epiphany. Yeah. <laughs> great. I'm glad to hear that. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah. Now, let's say that somebody comes to you, they're struggling with their trading, and uh, they are doing everything right, but they're still not finding that success. What is kind of the advice you'd give them at that point or the next step that they can take? I think the first thing is that uh, I I always ask, like I call it the trader's diagnosis. And I get a lot of people like that. They're like, I've been doing it for so many years. I'm just not getting it. The first thing I ask them is let me see your spreadsheet, you know, for the last two years. Now, if you already don't have a spreadsheet, then that's already the problem right there. That's mm -hmm. the first thing you need to start with. Because then if you have a spreadsheet, then we can kind of go back and take a look um, of what the statistics really are. Because trading is actually just a game of statistical probability, right? There's win-loss ratio and there's your win rate, which together combine to form what's called expectancy. So if you have a positive expectancy trading system, you're just going to make money. It's simple. Now, if you have a negative expectancy of your trades, then no matter what you do, you're not going to make money. So first thing is we figure out what is the statistics saying. Now, if we notice that, okay, it's borderline, I'm a break-even trader. Well, then there's only two ways, two things to fix. Either we increase our winning rate or we increase the win, uh, average winner versus the average loser. So then we diagnose that. So now then the third step would be, okay, we need to increase the average winner or the average uh, the win-loss ratio. So then we'll dive in and we'll take a look at the trades and we can see what we could have optimized here. Maybe could we have held this trade a bit longer? Could we have got out of the losing trade a bit quicker? So that's like a whole 
process of mm-hmm. diagnosing it starts with the statistics, however. So I would just tell listeners to just Google, you know, trading expectancy formula. There's calculators out there online. You can just plug in all of your data, how many trades you've taken, your wins, your losses, and it'll give you an expectancy. If it's negative, then just stop doing what you're doing because it's not going to work, right? And so stop driving yourself crazy. We got to find a system that works. So that's kind of how I would start is with their spreadsheet. Right. So finding your why, journaling your trades. I'm just curious, what are some of the statistics that you log on a regular basis? Other than your other than your average win and your average loss and your win rate, sure. So I I track um, days of the week, right? Yep. Which days I'm good at, which days I'm bad at. Uh, time of the day, which time of the day I'm better at, which time of the day I'm worse at. That's why I never trade after like 12 p.m. because my statistics <laughs> showed that it's not going to work. This is yep. not going to work. So by just by eliminating that, obviously I increased my you know uh, win rate. Um, so that's one of the thing I look at. I'll also look at size of the stop loss. Right. Maybe it turns out when I take a trade, it has a 30 cent stop loss. I do better than when I take trades that have a 50 cent stop loss. Mm-hmm. So I'll I'll try to find that. I'll also try to find average price of the stock. Maybe I'm really good with trading Tesla and Amazon and the bigger ones. Maybe I'm not that good when I trade lower price ones. Right. So then I'll 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 track that. I will also track uh, was the trade against the current trend of the market. Let's say if I was shorting and the market was going up that day, like it was a trade with or against the market. Uh, I'll look at, did I follow my trading plan? Yes or no, right? So then my spreadsheet will tell me that. I will also track my best stocks that I made the most amount of money on versus my worst stocks that I seem to always lose on. So I'll, I'll track that as well. And there's like a whole myriad of things in my spreadsheets, like a whole report section, which it's very, it's very detailed. It'll have every little thing because that helps me that just to optimize. If I can just fix this one thing, I'll increase mm-hmm. my win rate by 2%. Great. Now my win rate, let's say, was 65. Now it's 67. If I fix that thing right here, if I stop trading on Tuesdays, because for some reason, I don't know what it is, Tuesdays don't work for me. Now I can add another 2% to my yeah. thing. Now I'm winning 69. So that's how you small little increments is what you make to get to a profitable trading system. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, even the days of the week when you're, you know, you, you notice that Tuesdays are your worst particular day, but you also notice that on Mondays you're winning. Well, that can also yeah. tell you something that maybe the next day you're, you know, struggling with some overconfidence or maybe Mondays you're losing too. And the next day you're being over aggressive and trying to gain back some of those losses and it's costing some losses. So all data is data. And it's really great. And I love that you said that. So that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. The, uh, the chat pane is going crazy. They're, they're loving your, your uh, Excel spreadsheet. Are, are you using an Excel spreadsheet uh, sheet that you built yourself? Or is it, I know there's some software uh, companies out there that, that have trading software that will kind of allow you to document some of the trades too. Is it something you built yourself? Yeah. So, I mean, there's tons of great softwares out there these days, you know, trade review and trading journal spreadsheets. There's a bunch of different online ones that you could use. I have a custom Excel one. Uh, it is on, it's on my website as well. If anybody wants it, that's where they can get it. Um, so that that's fully customizable. And it also, I also track one more thing I forgot is the setups, right? Like if I'm going long versus short, that's obviously one thing I'll track. And I'll also track, Maybe when I'm trading reversals, I'm better. When I'm trading with the trend, maybe I'm not as good. So all these little things uh, we track. So yeah, it's it's Excel based. I like that just because it's with me on my computer and I could you know mess around with it when I, at night and just look around at my data. That's awesome. That's awesome. No, it's very cool. Awesome. Yeah, there was a uh, huge positive reaction. And and uh, what's the the website? That was I guess a good time to shout out the website since everyone's <laughs> like I need that I need that uh spreadsheet. Yeah, so li- livetraders.com is a spreadsheet, and in the resources section, they can find the spreadsheet. Got you. Just throw that, throw that into the chat for them. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So, so uh, what was kind of your, or maybe you never had one, but uh, if you did, what was your like aha moment during trading? What, what is, was there something, one in particular thing that kind of just changed your outlook of how you were looking at the market and just your your perspective of the market? I think one of the biggest things was, um, you know, when you're new to the market, you think that other people know more than you, right? That there's somebody out there who has all, all the answers. And oh, I can guarantee people know more than me. Yep. 
Uh, <laughs> that's not a question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, like how we always look at, like, for example, when you're totally new, you've never traded before. You think like, oh my God, Jim Cramer, you know, or whatever. Yeah, so we always yeah. have like, there's somebody out there that know everything. Nobody knows anything. Like we saw that just in 2022, the markets were down 35%. All the hedge funds were down 30, 40%. So nobody knows anything, right? So just realizing that your data is the only thing you need to know, right? Like you trusting your own trading, your own trades that you take, not somebody you're following, you're taking your own trades and building your data and your systems. That was the biggest realization when I just stopped following everybody and I just start, sat down and okay, I'm just going to trade and I'm going to log it all in the spreadsheet. Uh, that was the biggest turning point when I just kind of took ownership of, uh, of myself and my trading career. Yeah. I like what you said there. Cause I, I remember coming in when I was, I was about 18 when I started like really getting into the stock market a little bit. And uh, Jim Cramer was like the, the go-to, like everybody just knows who Jim Cramer is. And now, like with a whole bunch of years of experience after that, you're like, you're like, he's really recommending things at like all time highs, and like you're, you're like, I probably feel like I know more than Jim Cramer at this point. I, I don't know, but he's, you see that he's kind of uh, just throwing out a lot of wild picks sometimes. But um, yeah, do do your own research and and uh, make your make your own case. Are you more of a fundamental trader, or are you more based on technicals? Hundred percent technicals. When it comes to trading, I mean, I, I have investment portfolio that will could be fundamental, but when it comes to trading, uh, only technicals. Can't beat the technicals, that's for sure. Now, yeah. let's talk a little bit about pre-market prep and centering yourself so that you know what your why is and you're prepared to follow your plan. Like, what what do you do in the pre-market to get mentally ready for the trading day? Yeah. So f first thing, you know, first I'll come to my desk, I'll have a little half a glass of water with like squeeze lemon in it, start my day there. Then I come to my desk and I start looking at what stocks are gapping up or down today, right? So what's the news? Is something moving? Is something, you know, gapping up, gapping down? So I make a gap list, what I call, usually it's about 10, 15 stocks, uh, but I'll filter them like based on daily chart, 60 minute chart, weekly, monthly. Like I want all time frames in alignment. Uh, once I get that, uh, usually I left with maybe less than 10 stocks at my watch list. Now that's my list for the day. I rarely trade outside of that list. It'll be most of the trades will come from that list. And if there's no trades to be had on that list, then I won't trade. Um, so that's kind of what I would do pre-market, build a watch list. Uh, once I'm done with that, I kind of have like I read my values every day. So I have these little post-it notes for myself, my values, my purpose statements, kind of read that in the morning. Uh, and I do a little... It's a classic thing. It's like an NLP anchor. I kind of clap my hands, let's ready to go. Do the same thing every single day. So it's like a routine. Um, so that's kind of way, my way to get myself into that mode. And uh, that's it. Grab a cup of coffee and let's go. That's awesome. And what about after a loss? After a loss, no, no changes. No change in any of my thing. I, I, I think of trading as binary, win, loss. It's all part of my overall statistics. If my overall statistics are positive, then that's just a part of it. So there's like, it doesn't affect it because all my losses are the same. Like I have a, a fixed number in mind. Once I hit that, I'm automatically out of the trade. So I'm never going to have a loss that I never expected, right? Because it's automatic in my software. It's like, hey, you lose X amount, you're out of the position. Right. No, absolutely. I'm talking, I guess, before you got to that level then, uh, there's always going to be some emotions that, that are attached to winning and losing, especially the newer that you are. I think even as a seasoned trader, I believe there's still emotions with winning and losing. You're just able to control them a little bit better and they don't affect you in a negative way. Uh, so I, how did you get to a point where you can just say it's just a loser, it's part of the expectancy and that's just what it is? Yeah, I think that, that was a whole period of like, you know, kind of working on myself. And that's why I, I tell people like trading was the biggest personal development journey I've encountered, <laughs> you know, like I got into it for trading and then I became a psychologist pretty much. It was like you're trying to work on yourself because I, I had that issue too. I was just getting out of my winners and just holding the loser too long or a bad day would destroy you and you go on a tilt, you know. So those things were a matter, A, it's a matter of time too. You get desensitized to it over time. And then B, I think it's important to surround yourself with people who are real with you, right? They're not going to sugarcoat things. So I had a good group of people, uh, my mentor, you know, all of the other uh, people uh, in the community that we all kept each other accountable. And uh, I think accountability is the biggest thing. Having a trading buddy that you can either 
bounce ideas with or who can hold you accountable and you hold him accountable, you have that relationship. Uh, so for, for one of the things that I did is every single trading day when I was new, I would record myself like a video screen share, record myself trading. And I just uploaded it on like a Vimeo or YouTube or whatever back when it was back in the day. I don't care if anybody watched it or not, but that was an accountability to myself to just upload every single trade that I did. And I sent the link to my mentor. He watches, doesn't watch it, didn't care. It was the part, the thing I had to do. Uh, and then sometimes he would watch it. Sometimes he would not. And uh, yeah, just having that accountability. And uh, you know, it could even mean if I break my trading plan, I'm going to give you $50. You break your trading plan, you're going to give me $50. Just having some level of accountability. Uh, and then you train your mind, right? Habits are created over time. So you desensitize yourself to it through uh, progressive desensitization. Yeah. I can listen to you talk and hear your responses. And I can, I can already know whether or not a person is going to be successful in trading or not, just based on the habits and the, the mindset that you are expressing right now. It's, it's, it's so blatant. We've been talking about this for three years now on this show about all of the things that we're discussing right now. And it, it they are fundamentally the reasons why people are successful or they're not successful. And yeah, that's, that's just the way it is. So do, do you have any other final words kind of or suggestions that you would offer to individuals that are still struggling right now, looking to find their why? Uh, you know, we've already talked about the why we've talked about journaling, any other suggestions that you want to drop? Yeah, I would tell them to like take a career approach, right? I think, uh, I don't know who said it. it, was Warren Buffett that, you know, somebody said it, like who people underestimate what they can achieve in 10 years, right? But they grossly overestimate what they can achieve in one mm -hmm. year. So like having a longer term vision, being patient with yourself, like giving yourself enough time. And uh, and if it turns out that you need, you can't full-time trade, then hey, do your, keep your job, do your side gigs, maybe swing trade, just get involved with the markets. Once you can actually make a sustainable income from that, then you can think about, you know, uh, quitting your job and trading full time. But a lot of people rush into it. You know, they're like, I'm going to quit my job and trade. And now guess what happens? There's no income coming in. Now you have pressure on yourself to make money from trading. Yeah. So you're going to make wrong decisions under pressure. So I think eliminating all of those stressors, eliminating all of those uh, things that are going to cause you to do a certain way, you know, you need money, I got to take a trade. Once you have eliminated all of that, either through saving a lot of money before you come to trading or trading on the side while having another job and people on the Calif in California and West Coast do that really well. I mean, I have a lot of people who trade from you know six to like whatever, and then they go actually to their job. Mm -hmm. So um, have basically put less pressure on yourself, be patient with yourself and take a longer term approach, right? You want to trade for a living. Don't trade like you want to retire next week. Do it like that. So yeah, and I, yeah, um, I think go ahead. Yeah, no, I was gonna say I think that's a good point because I, I even even traders that are trading successfully but they have a job, right? And they go, you know what? I'm I'm making enough money trading, day trading, swing trading. It's time for me to quit the job. I think just that I, I want to say traumatic, but just that big change in somebody's life. Then they they're looking at themselves a month or two later, like, well, how come I'm not trading the same way I was before, right? And then they don't take into accountability like they maybe they like their job maybe they hated their job but they still had that paycheck coming in right now sort of once something external like that changes and there's a big drastic like okay there's a lot more pressure in the actual trade itself people tend to start to that that plan the, the strategy they were using before that they were successful with they're adding so much more pressure to it that wasn't there before right and you kind of have to cope with that and it's, it's almost like you have to relearn who you are relearn your your own mentality before you get back to that point of, of training again. So it's like you take a step back to move two step forward type type situation. Yeah. And uh, Anmol, I am halfway through your book, by the way, just so you know, the prepping for success. I'm halfway sure. through it. Haven't finished it yet. I just started it and I'm, I'm excited to read it. I do like the fact that you, you pointed out at the beginning of the book that, you know, there's nothing new in the book. You, you, these, these are all thoughts that have been free and available to everybody around the world for a very long time. You're just wording it in a way that may resonate better with individuals. And so another level for our listeners is, you know, grab his book, read his book, because it does have some value in it that, uh, that might resonate with you where you've heard it before, but it didn't quite click. So maybe hearing it from Unmole will. So 
Hanmol, I think we're about out of time. I wanted to thank you very much for joining us. And uh, any last words? That's I'll just ask if you have any last words. Oh, first, thanks for having me. It was, uh, it was a, definitely a great chat, and I uh, hope your listeners got a lot out of it. And uh, yeah, if they want to keep in touch with me, uh, Instagram and Twitter is usually where I'm the most active. And uh, my handles on both of them are Delta90. And I did that when I was trading a long time ago, with options for Delta 90. So I just kept the username and then they verified it. I just don't want to change it anymore. <laughs> so I kept it the same, but it's Delta 90 on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, yeah, happy to help. If anybody has any questions, livetraders.com for the website. And, and we'll put all your contact information in the details below. So the people can reach out to you if they want. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Anmol, uh, appreciate having you on. It was, uh, it was definitely a pleasure. We'll have to get you back very, very soon. Tracy, always a pleasure to, to host with you. And for all the guys and gals in the live chat hanging out with us, appreciate you uh, you staying with us. And uh, for everybody catching the recording, you guys are incredible. Thanks for tuning in each and every week. And we'll see you guys all next week. Take it easy, guys. Um, 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 um.